director of the film we're about to see is a very politically conscious human being. His full name is Constantine Costa Gavras. But any time I've been exposed to his name, it's always been just simply Costa Dash Gavras. I don't know why he doesn't use his first name, but he's an extraordinarily uh, gifted director. And what you will see in tonight's film, The Music Box, is the skill of someone who's able to keep the action and the sense of tension continuously building. Uh, his screenwriter, that is the person who really started the whole ball rolling, is Joe Esterhaz. And what these two filmmakers are really doing is fictionalizing what is in fact taking place today. Here's what I mean. After World War II, a number of German Nazis came to both the United States and to South America. They got jobs, took on different names, lived full and rather enriching lives. In the meantime, both the Israeli agencies and some uh, uh, parts of the United States government, like the CIA and possibly even uh, the immigration services, uh, sought out these people, sought out these individuals who were never prosecuted for their heinous crimes. Well, one figure in particular that is still being adjudicated today in Munich, Germany, even as I speak, is a fellow by the name of John Demajunik. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He's now 89 years old. He sits in court being accused of having been a Nazi guard at a concentration camp in Poland called Sobibor, S-O-B-I-B-O-R. Uh, he had already been tried in Israel for being a guard that he wasn't. That is to say, they misidentified him. He was accused of being a Nazi uh, soldier called Ivan the Terrible, who apparently was a very vicious uh, guard uh, at one of the uh, concentration call, uh, camps called Treblinka. Well, uh, the Israeli Supreme Court had to let him go. But then he was re-identified as this man that I just mentioned, John Demajunik, uh, and was, <coughs> excuse me, and was uh, extradited uh, to Munich, Germany, where the trial now is in its, I think, fourth month. <coughs> I'm very sorry. Now, tonight's film is a fictionalized adaptation of what's going on. There are two real questions, or two issues, <clears throat> that are addressed, I think, in this film. One is, can we ever really know anyone? The great existential philosopher John Paul Sartre once said, that we can never know what's going on behind the eyeballs of the other human being, no matter who that human being is. And that human being may be our father, our mother, our brother, our sister, and that's one of the issues that uh, Costa Gavras and Joe Esterhaz uh, depict. Because one of the central characters in tonight's film is an older man, a retired uh, worker, uh, whose name is Mishka, but goes by the name of Michael, Mishka or Michael Laz Laszlo. And he is now being accused of having been one of those Nazi guards, excuse me, he is now being accused of having been one of those Nazi personalities who in Hungary executed persons 
at his whim. Now, of course, he claims that he's innocent, and we're not sure that he is guilty. His daughter, played beautifully by Jessica Lang, is an attorney, but not an attorney in the immigration uh, arena or naturalization laws. However, Mishka, the father, insists that she take the case. Mishka is played by a very interesting Austrian actor by the name of Armin Mueller Stahl. He has a very interesting presentational style as an actor. It's in his voice. You'll find that he almost always has a breathy, whispery quality when he speaks, which forces us really to strain on occasions to hear exactly what he's saying. I'm not sure exactly why he has chosen to avoid raising the level of his voice at a pitch which we are more capable of hearing. But when he does raise his voice, the contrast uh, is explosive so that uh, he really generates a larger, greater degree of power by having all of a sudden become this uh, uh, very vociferous, very strong vocal individual. Happens only very occasionally. An interesting part about Jessica Lange's presentation is that she doesn't try to be attractive. You'll find that if she's got any makeup at all, it's only so that the camera can pick up her eyes and her facial features. But her hair is relatively unmade up. Uh, she wears nothing that is provocative, and yet she is a very attractive woman. And I find that a kind of, I'm not sure that the word courageous is appropriate, but it is rather uh, revealing that here is an actor, here is an actress who chooses uh, to remove the sexuality so that she can play the role of a daughter who happens to be an attorney fighting for her father who is being accused of heinous crimes. Now, the other issue that uh, I think the film addresses is something that we've often heard, and that is we must never forget what happened to the Jews at concentration camps and pogroms and ghettos, whether it was in Hungary, Poland, Germany, Czechoslovakia. So that too serves as a motivation for the making of this film, the memory of what happened. And the memory of what happened, in my judgment, is most profoundly illustrated in what you and I would otherwise call the minor or small characters in the film. There are approximately three or four different character witnesses who appear at the court in which the individual Mishka is being um, judged. And there are, e each one of these so called minor characters is powerfully uh, acted out. I personally am uh, deeply moved by this one character uh, whose name in the film is Mr. Bodai. He'll have a little bit of a goatee and he'll speak of how his family were, uh, how his family was uh, uh, murdered. Uh, the story is a very simple one. Is this man guilty or is he not guilty? And the question of whether he is guilty or not is will remain something of a question, but I think you can determine that Joe Esterhaz, the writer, has a clear answer for you. I hope you enjoy tonight's film, The Music Box.